cases that don't have your lawyer or yourself plead something like, this is best for me. Make sure when you're pleading, you're thinking about what's best for your child. And if they have health issues, if there are safety issues, or if there are happiness issues, which is what the welfare means in the statute, then those are the things you want to look at first. Now, are, are all those, a lot of people, or I even, I've, even I have said this, that a lot of it is subjective and nuanced, I guess. Is, is it, is it is that actually the case or are there really ways to drill down to demonstrate the situation to where you know like maybe joint custody or full custody is in the best interest of the child it, it's definitely a subjective test and so it goes by proof which is why your exhibits matter so much do you now, want one, more well, and I don't want to. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll. I mean, we're going to dive more into that too. But I mean, I just a follow-on question to that is: how, I mean, how do you develop the proof, and how do you document what's going on to really communicate that to the court? It's important to have, if you can, to have a history. Uh, sometimes. Uh, someone who's worked mostly outside the home and when there's a breakup, now they want to spend more time at home. That's okay as long as you express it. But if you do have a history of uh, when you went to the school, the parent-teacher uh, nights, those kinds of things, shows the involvement. And when you're trying to go with health, do you know who your physician is for your child? Do you, uh, does the other side know that sort of thing? So I'm being pretty general here, but it all uh, is a matter of proof and to show that the child is every bit as um, safe and happy and healthy with you as uh, he or she is with the other party, or maybe even more with you than with the other party, all depending on the facts. Yeah, I know. The one thing I've noticed is the, let's see, how do I say this? The misrepresent, uh, the taking things out of context, right? I mean, it's like you'll, you, somebody will be involved and then some, you know, a, a, a toxic type person will, because you didn't do it last Tuesday, will you never do, you know, they, they talk in absolutes and they completely tie one specific incident to mean the, the, to try to say the whole thing. And how do you, I mean, how would you recommend somebody deal with that whenever they're, they're basically being misrepresented, maybe even lied about in, uh, in court documents or in court proceedings? And that is very common. And it's something that needs to be fought, but not with emotion, which is hard when you're just being hit with this. So you have to end up looking at each fact and then either disproving it because it is their burden to prove that. So once you're able to disprove, then the ball back uh, bounces back to them and they have to show that you're wrong. So the more accurate your proof is, the better you'll be at fighting that sort of thing. And we could go into some examples. Well, I wanted to ask you on that too, because it seems as though your present, or like, let's say if, if I was your client, it seems like my presentation, how I, I hold myself and how I come across in court plays maybe more of a role than it should, right? So if I come in disheveled or if I come in irritated, if I come in glaring at the X, all those little little nuances, do those play a factor? Because it seems like from what I've seen it, they do. Absolutely. If I'm sitting in court and I'm waiting for my case and there's someone up with his lawyer or without or her lawyer uh, and the they're interrupting the other side, yelling, 
he's a liar, she's a liar, um, pounding the desk. I don't usually see that, but I do see uh, telling the judge that he or she is wrong. Oh, dear I've God. Seen, <laughs> I've seen um, uh, try not to either be angry or whine. You just, the court is supposed to be a place for dispassionate reasoning, which is really hard when you're being attacked. So you almost have to step outside yourself. If uh, surprise things happen, um, if all else fails, uh, you can ask for a continuance to uh, bring proof. But usually those surprise things, if they're not kept out of court for being untimely, which happens, uh, are uh, something that you are allowed because of our principle in United States, at least, of due process, you're able to see that and you're able to provide counter argument to that. Uh, so you want to, and even if it's, even if it's horrible, I had a client once who is ADHD and so was taking what for most people would be speed, but it was legal for him. But his great ex-wife said that he was on speed and wanted him monitored around the kids so we had to put on the testimony but you have to calm down enough so that you can be able to see through that nonsense and get to uh, the real facts so the judge can see it yeah one of the things I've I've noticed is that if you can stay calm and persevere through it and although it's completely unfair right I mean like in the situation you just explained to, to have that taken, like I was just talking about before, taken out of context, and now you have to defend yourself, and now you have to spend all the extra money and to do it. I mean, that right there is enough to drive you, to, put, to push you over the edge sometimes. But if you can just calm down, things generally come to, like, rise. the truth comes out, right? I mean, I mean, you just basically said that. And I guess so my, my, my follow-on question on that, and I had someone ask me this the other day, is why does it seem like the the burden of proof falls on the target of these things? I, I mean, is it just a family court thing, or I mean, because everywhere else it's like you know you're innocent until proven guilty, unless it's in family court, and then we'll just err on the side of caution and we'll limit your visitation, or we'll give you supervised visit. You know, we'll do all these different things until you prove that prove a negative, basically. Yeah, and you want to try to make it so it's not proving a negative, but that you're proving a positive, the alternative to whatever they're saying. It's not that the burden falls on the so-called guilty. What it is, is that they make an allegation, then you disprove that, and then the ball is back in their court. Remember in California, we don't have juries. So essentially you're saying all of this to the judge. And so it does go back and forth, back and forth, but if there is something that, uh, for example, if uh, if the ex is saying that uh, that you're a drug addict, to keep with that example, right. they have to actually have some proof. So you freaking out and and just sort sort of saying I didn't do it, that that isn't your proof. And should you in a in some sort of universe not have to prove that, that they should bring proof? Yes. But because of our back and forth that we get to in court, if it's something that hasn't been briefed, then uh, in other words, put into your declarations with evidence, uh, then you end up with a little bit more of a free for all and you're feeling a little out of control. So it's usually better to attack all of that um, in advance. Yeah, I had a that's a great point. Um, I had a question that I wanted to bring up. It's from Win Forward, and it says, "Could you ask what to include in a write-up to explain a relationship and involvement in your child's life?" So you'd mentioned that earlier, but and that's um, that's a really great question. How would you specifically do that to actually demonstrate that? Uh, but you want to write your affidavit or declaration in a way that divides it by subject, not just by date, would be my uh, the way I like to write them. 
so that you have um, involvement with the children. And then you'll have a short paragraph. And then if in your jurisdiction, you're allowed to actually attach exhibits at that stage, then I like to have the exhibit there. And so your very short declaration could end up being a two inch document with all of the exhibits attached. So what you're really doing is, and I'm getting too long, aren't I, Dwayne? No, 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 you're but, fine. I was just gonna, I, I was, I, well, I guess I was, since you paused, I was gonna ask a question. Like when I did okay. mine, my attorney had said, you know, the, the, the declaration needs to be less than 10 pages. And, yes. uh, and I was kind of fixated on that, but I didn't think about that I could have, I mean, so 10 pages, and maybe the exhibits being, you know, photographs or report or, you know, different things that's fully, I mean, acceptable I and mean, that's okay. Well, in this jurisdiction, but I do believe uh, because of my national context that, uh, that some form of that is allowable in all jurisdictions, but absolutely. So if you say that you, um, that the children have, um, uh, that you've been the team dad, say, for a, a, a baseball or a softball league. Okay. Then having, and then say, see exhibits, and then maybe you have, sure, a picture or a certificate or uh, proof that uh, you've been the one taking the kids to the game or the ballet uh, troupe or the chess meet, whatever it is. Hmm. If you can get a little of that and it shows, um, it shows what you want. And yes, it's a little more work to put all of this, but it turns that little short document, your 10 pager here in California into a book, a book of the life of the children. Oh, and before we forget, Dwayne, we want to make sure uh, that your listeners know that you're focusing this on the children, not yourself. Uh, it's, it's best interest of the child, not best interest of the parent. So every paragraph, sure, write your draft, that's fine. Write it for your lawyer, write it for yourself, but then go through every paragraph and make sure it's about your child. So switch it around. Um, right. Susie enjoys being with me, and I know that because, as opposed to, it's my right as a mom or dad to have Susie 50% of the time. And if you can't settle, then it is uh, for the bench officer. That is your audience. And he or she may not ever have had kids. They may not know anything about uh, family law, or they may be the wisest person on the planet. But I would say that if I uh, were helping Dwayne in the past, if you're asking for 50-50, but you're slamming the other side, you're actually, and a lot of people do that, yeah. um, but you're actually, the judge who sees, you know, a hundred of these a week is saying, well, he's not saying anything that makes me want to take the kids away from mom so why is he so focused on slamming her of course anybody who's listened to your show knows that there were a lot of other issues going on there yeah uh, but but in an average uh case where it's not quite so toxic um doing a lot of uh spouse or other parent bashing if what you really want is to prove that both are equally capable of being 50% parents is sometimes um, a little bit of a waste when there's so much more that can be expressed about why the kids love it so much at your house, for example. Oh, uh, I see. Didn't... You're, you're actually wasting your time, right? I mean, you're taking that limited time you have to make your point. And you're focusing it on the negative where you could use it more effectively just to demonstrate to the court that, hey, this guy's like in my situation, this guy's OK. Yeah, it, it depends. Now, if you really have someone that should not be making medical decisions, for example, then right. you want to show why. Um, but but to do that in a case where you're just proving that and I 
don't I hate it when we go here, but anyway, that you're just as good a parent as the other one that has had more custody, um, then you want you want to show why the kids should be with uh, with you uh, the fifty percent of the time. And sometimes your um, custody schedule works against you. So it's harder when you're an eighty twenty uh, dad or mom. Uh, to have more examples. So then sometimes yeah. you need, uh, so you need a witness declaration. Sometimes uh, you need uh, statements from uh, if your jurisdiction allows you to get statements from teachers um, in LA County, where I am, uh, the teachers have lawyered up pretty well and <laughs> you, don't, you don't get too many statements out of them. But if you do, but say a coach or um, the ballet instructor, whatever, who knows you. So it, it, it pays to get involved with the kids since you want to be involved with the kids and then be able to prove it. I usually say to people that they should front the parts of their cases that uh, they see as negatives because if you can explain that in the past you had um, most that you were working full time and that mom was home. I'm using your example. It can yeah. also be reverse gender, of course. Right. Um, but uh, but that now you have rearranged your life. So so for example, I think you said you had a. Uh, 225, what I call a 225 custody arrangement, where you had maybe yeah. Monday, Tuesday, she had Wednesday, Thursday, and then you traded off every other weekend. So you ended up with five in a row every other weekend. Yep. Yeah. I, right. And I was the Wednesday, Thursday, she was the Monday, Tuesday. But yeah, I had that. One reason that's so good for people who have had uh, less time in the past is because you can say, I have now rearranged my work schedule so that I have more time on Wednesdays and Thursdays. So I want to specifically take my daughter to, you know, guess, pick one. And I want to take my son to uh, pick the other. And I will be going on the weekends to the uh, tournaments or whatever, uh, even on my non-weekends. Um, you can take three weeks to write something and it, on a busy day when the judge has maybe 20 to 25 cases, they're going to spend 10 minutes reading each one. So all of your nuances are lost. And so you really have to get to the point. So when I say add um, maybe a paragraph on something that happens, and then maybe a little quote, and then it says C exhibit in my jurisdiction, C exhibit A or one or two, uh, whatever it works. But at any rate, they may not actually get to your exhibits, but the exhibits are there to support that quote so that you shift the burden back to the other side. Uh, so, my point being that if the judge is only going to take 10 minutes to read all of this careful material, think about even page layout. So have, I use subheadings so that if the judge wants to know about your involvement, it's child involvement. Next one, um, the judge wants to know about why you should have uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays, then you say, then you make a subheading of that. So if all the court has time to do is look at your subheadings, then that's what they do. And then if they want to read a little bit more, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, something's uh, gotten, um, you've, you've hit a chord in their minds, they'll read that section and maybe gloss over the rest. So it's not like a novel. They're not reading it from beginning to end and enjoying it. They're trying to get to the point so they can see why your case is different than the guy before you and the gal after you. So let me ask you this, because and I think that that makes I love that. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. But 
if I have, con if a person has concerns with the other spouse or the other parent, how would you document that? Right. I mean, I would, would I even, would you recommend that I even bring up anything that I'm, I mean, cause here's the problem. I think about it. It's like, for the most part, there's nothing too egregious in my situation. I mean, yes, I think that my ex has some, some serious problems and I think they're causing issues with the kids, but they're so nuanced that it's not significant. You know, I mean, I remember you used, to, used to, I would talk to my kids therapist and they would say, well, you're, you know, you guys are both good parents. And I'm like, well, what do you consider a good parent? And it's like, well, you know, your ex isn't putting cigarettes out on the children. And I'm like, okay, well then she's mother of the year. But, but I mean, the reality is, is if she was doing that, then it would make sense to put that in. Cause that's a, that's a serious issue. But would I have been better served? And I don't think in, in re response, I think I did throw some spears over at her way. Should I have just, would I, would, it, would I have been better off just basically focusing entirely on me and the kids and not anything to do with the ex? Would that have been a better strategy? Not necessarily. Uh, if communications are a problem, I usually have a section uh, about poor communication, poor, excuse me, poor <laughs> communication. Right. Because uh, it just because you have poor communications doesn't mean that you shouldn't be a 50 50 parent. So I would I would front that, as I've said, front the, the bad things. I think it's important to front things like communications. I think if there are lies and misstatements uh, and you're the responding party, I definitely have a section for that to show. I don't usually use the word lie because that's considered a personal attack, which in California we don't, we're not supposed to do. Okay. So I would say that it's, uh, these are all nuances. I'm sorry. I get a no. little nerdy at 630 in the morning. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, nonetheless, I think um, in California, credibility is another one. Always always important that uh, when somebody is misstating uh, that they are specifically uh, misstating to the court, in other words, lying to the court, if you have direct proof of that, it is um, really important actually to have to vote a little section to that. So you have kids, how great the kids are up on top. Maybe then you get to the credibility issues. Sometimes I put those after support, you know, each case mm -hmm. is a little different. But if if it's going to be where one side is attacking the other, um, there's an old maxim in law that says that if you do not respond to an attack, that you are um, accepting it as true. So you don't, so you exactly. definitely don't want to ignore it. You definitely want to go there. You just don't want to put your entire 10 pages devoted to about what a, a jerk she is or he right. is, um, because then it looks like more like you may be the one with the personality disorder. <laughs> exactly. I love that point. So let me ask you this, because I, I often tell people I have a technique that I call hybrid no contact. And it, the whole premise behind it is, is whenever you get the email from your ex, uh, that the, you know, the seven page email that's, that outlines why you're such a scumbag and a horrible person and why, you know, you're the, the worst parent ever for little Timmy, uh, mm -hmm. that you ignore everything in that, all the accusations, all the hate, all the discontent, you find whatever the question was. So like in that seven page document, if it was, you know, when is little Timmy's soccer practice, that's what you would answer. You would say, you know, dear pumpkin comma, Timmy's soccer practice is on Tuesday at three o'clock at field seven you know, Dwayne, and to ignore everything else. I, and some people get really freaked out thinking, well, if I don't respond to everything, then everyone's going to believe it. Now, in those correspondence, I'm okay, right? Uh, what you're doing is actually great. There's an okay. author, and he's also a lawyer, and, a, and he also is a shrink. He's, he's like a Billy Eddie, triple right? Threat. Bill Eddy, yeah, and he writes um, a series of books. He's got a new one out, but it's all on this biff, uh, brief, informative, friendly, and factual. And he actually, I recommend those books, frankly, to my high conflict clients. And some of them hate having to read a book because they think they are doing it right, and they respond oh, to the full, 
they respond to the full seven page email with a eight page response. And those cases, um, if you find yourself in that situation, you want to stop. And I really, really would recommend reading uh, one of Bill Eddy's and there are other authors. And what Duane is describing that's so important is that you can add fuel to that fire or you can just stop the fighting. Now, yeah. the interesting thing too, and I never let a good deed go unreported in these declarations. So if I'm learning parenting skills of a new teenager, for example, or if I'm learning how to communicate better, if I have a section in my declaration that says poor communications, then then you could actually give an example of that. This is what we were doing in the past. This is what I'm trying to guide us toward. I've recommended to my ex-spouse that uh, he or she also read this book. I'm reading it. I'm learning a lot about it. And then, and the court thinks, oh, this person has the presence of mind to realize that you don't keep pounding yourself in the head. It doesn't get any better. So you end up, I put the books in, uh, the parenting books or the uh, or the communications books right into my declaration. It shows that you're growing in this in this um, life that you're going through. I had a, a, a caller the other day who who called in and was being accused of uh, all kinds of stuff, you know, drugs and whatever. And proactively, they went and got drug tested, um, and you know, and then went and did some classes and everything. And I'm like, dude, you're spot on. And it's so easy for people to get angry and say, well, I shouldn't have to do that. That's not true. But you got to really understand the fight you're in and be strategic, right? Yeah, you may you may be morally right. But if you don't do the right things, you're not you're not presenting your best foot forward, so to speak. The, it, absolutely. It's not that uh, Sure, it chafes a little bit that you're having to prove that you're the good person, but or that both of you are good people. Uh, however, remembering that you broke up for a reason and distrust is part of that. Um, getting yeah. trust is earned. And I have to say that a lot to people because once trust is broken, and I don't just mean with an affair, but whatever broke the relationship up and yours was a marriage but over 50 percent of the uh, relationships in california are non-marital and sometimes they're relatively oh, short wow. and people yeah it's uh so sometimes those short relationships have the most blow-ups because they really haven't learned what the other person's like at breakfast the next morning very well but at any but at any rate what you're looking for is trying to convince a judge. So if you have to say, she has persistently said that I am a drug addict or an alcoholic, so I am bringing you proof that I am not that. Now, if this were a criminal court, it is not so the defendant doesn't get up on the stand usually almost never but if the lawyer for that defendant can show and it's in law school they called it some other dude did it so if you can prove that somebody else was there and did the crime that that proves that you didn't do it so now back to family law if you're having to prove a few things for the benefit of getting your children, and since this is a custody program and not a support program, um, then just do it and do it with joy. It's all, I mean, you either resent it so badly you don't defend yourself properly, or you do it uh, in a way that uh, uh, helps your case and keeps the cost down really, because uh, the cost of that fellow's um, what was it, drugs or alcohol test and yeah. uh, training was a lot cheaper than lawyers. And uh, 
sometimes the lawyers don't always say what you want them to say because they don't uh, t totally agree with your case. It's nice when you're in lockstep, which means you need to train your lawyer on what the facts are. But yes, doing the low cost but absolutely important steps to uh, keep you out of Dwayne, you said that you you had a custody evaluation. I've heard you talk about it before yeah. on your show. Yeah. Those things are hugely expensive. Yeah, yes. And, <laughs> and mine and, was cheap <laughs> compared to what it, they normally cost. And it was and still like of, five or $8,000. It was a lot of money. Yeah, they're, they're really expensive and they can be much more. And if you've already proven that you're not a drug addict, for example then you don't end up having to pay some professional to prove that you're not a drug addict. Uh, so mm -hmm. I, uh, I love those self-help, not self-help in calling the person names or any of that, but pr uh, proving your side of the case is always a good idea. And, and, and frankly, you know, that half asleep judge that's drinking coffee and reading through 25 of these either at night before he goes home or, or in the morning uh, before court, uh, something like that really stands out. Uh, that's, uh, you know, it's amazing because this is, it's so nuanced. And one of the things that we didn't mention, but I just want to throw out there, I think this is why it's important to have a local attorney who understands, because I was going to ask you this, I would imagine that if you know that we have Judge Smith and you've and you've been in front of Judge Smith, you know, 17 times in the last year and you know what they're looking for, that document that we're going to craft is going to be crafted for him. And maybe, you know, Judge Jane or whatever who completely has a different priority, it would be crafted different for that person. Am I right on that? I think so. I it Weirdly, the judges do change. Um, so sometimes you have to craft them for the every judge and not just for right. a specific judge. But I will say that although a lot of us lawyers have a, a fairly healthy uh, self-regard, as in there's a lot of narcissists who are lawyers <laughs> too, and yeah. judges, um, but nonetheless, there usually in family law is not going to be someone that you should hire that's 200 miles away that's going to be better than a good experienced local lawyer who you don't have to pay to drive down the freeway who knows yeah. the judges and who knows the other professionals in your area so that if there are going to be side deals or uh, settlement conferences that they already know one another. So yes, I agree with that 100%, Dwayne, that you shouldn't get the pro from Dover that lives three counties away. I want to say that people who uh, control their emotions, we talked about that, uh, it's, it's very helpful to stick to the facts. You have to find the facts and then present them and then you have to organize yourself so that the judge will actually read your facts. And, and uh, that's enough for today. I'd love to come back sometime if people got any value out of this, Dwayne.